Hello and welcome my friend. Today I would like to show you how you can build custom report pages in Polarion and especially how you can make them dynamic by using page parameters. So let's get started. To demonstrate how to do it or to give you a general overview how it works, I have opened one of the standard reports which ships with Polarion. So here a traceability report which is called software requirements, software test case coverage which shows us the coverage of requirements to test cases, basically. And on the right side, I have options to filter this report. So for example, if I'm only interested in iPad-related requirements, I can apply this query. And you can see here, the widget is displaying now only requirements which contain the word iPad inside. And also the coverage query here is adjusted. How does it work? To better understand that, let's switch to edit mode of that page. Every Polarion report page consists of um, a canvas, which can be laid out here, which gives you the basic structure of the page. And within this canvas, so these gray things here, you can place widgets. In this report, we have placed a traceability widget, which is this guy here, and a pie chart widget, which is this guy. The widgets are available here on the right side, and the best way to understand how they work is just try and error, uh, play with them a bit, and you see how they, how they work. Today, I would like to focus more on how you can make them dynamic. So we have the widgets, which display data in different ways. The dynamic part is managed by page parameters. And to, to, to define these parameters, you need to go here in the top to page parameters. And we can see in this page currently four parameters are defined. Uh, some of them are enumerations and some of them are just here string fields like the text parameter I have just, the query parameter I've just used. If you want to define a new parameter, you can use this plus option here and then pick one of the different types which are available. I have other videos which explain in more detail how you can create the different parameters and how you can create dynamic pages with the different parameters. So I will not go into detail in this video. So we understand that the parameters are defined for the page and are values which can be changed by the user. But how does the user enter the values in the field? Because we have just defined here which parameters are available. To allow the user to actually manipulate these parameters, you need a special widget. And let's go back to the widget section. This widget is called page parameters. And you can have only one parameter widget per page. So you cannot like um, display some of our par parameters in the top left corner and some maybe in the top right corner. It's always one widget, one or nothing. So here's the widget and you see this page parameter widget has a selection of the parameters which are visible or editable for the user. And if you hit the select button, you can add or remove the parameters and change the order of appearance here. So once you've done that, they will appear on the page. That's all you need to do basically to uh, allow a user to enter parameters. However, we have not yet made the connection between um, the dynamic values, which can be entered here, and the, the visualization of the entered data. And the tricky bit here is that, and let's open now the, the, um, the, table, uh, the traceability table widget, is that you need to switch in your widget at first from the standard Lucene query type to Lucene and Velocity. If you want to have more information on Velocity, there is a nice tutorial available on the Apache website. Um, for now, I will not go into detail. So Velocity gives us the possibility to access the Java API of Polarion, and we need the page parameters object to access the page parameter values. You can see that here in this line. Typically, uh, let me just copy here 
the relevant piece. Okay, let's delete that one and just paste it. So what you need to do to access a parameter in a query is just this little thing. So you access the page parameters object. Uh, and in velocity, the dollar symbol indicates that this is an object or a variable. And the next thing after the point is the name of the parameter. So we have actually a parameter, which is called query, which we have used at the beginning. So we want to access the query parameter. And what do we want? We want to have the value. So in this way, that's all we need to do to access the dynamic uh, parameter uh, and use it in the query. So if I go back, you see there is a bit more, uh, but that's only because we have more parameters in this page. So you see here, um, there are additional parameters which are accessed, like here the target version, and there are some additional things done to build the query. Uh, so typically what you always need to do is to check do we actually have a parameter value? So that's this check is empty. And if there is a parameter value available, then you display it. And you see here this hash if and hash and is just the way how velocity does if else statements. So no rocket science in the end. Uh, even if you're no programmer, um, you can more or less uh, copy paste these lines and get already quite far. Um, so that's how the connection is made. Let's go back to the page. Let's don't save it for now. And um, let's see what happens if I enter here a value. And now to better understand what's happening, let me just create a screenshot. Right, so here we are. What do we see on the page? So we have here the page parameters widget. This widget displays the page parameters which are not visible because this is our, let's say, the data which makes the page dynamic. But the page parameters widget gives the user access to the page parameters. So what you do, you enter or select here some values. And whenever you change the default values and you hit the apply button, you can see that this is added to the URL of our page. That's the standard way how uh, parameters are passed to HTML pages. So the question mark indicates to the browser now there is a parameter coming. Uh, the first section here defines the ID. And the second after the equals is the value. So, and this widget knows I want to get the page parameter with the ID query, and then I will use this inside this uh, widget. And you remember the way how we accessed it was uh, was dollar page parameters. That's the name of the parameters object which gi which gives us access to the parameters. Then we use the ID which is in our case query, and you see it matches here to this one. And then we use value, which gives us the value. In our case, it's iPad. And so the query actually here for this widget is then uh, resolved to the word iPad. And then there was a little if else at the end or if statement, which just checks um, is it not empty? And that's the whole magic, actually. So you define page parameters, and you need the page parameters object to um, make the widgets dynamically react on it. 
If you want to know more in detail how this works, I have a bunch of videos which explain for each parameter type uh, how you can use them in the, in the widgets and how you can create custom widgets for the different page parameters. So I hope I made you a bit curious and uh, hope to see you soon in my other videos.